Hi everyone, this is Izzy at Minerva. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through step by step how to draft out a skirt that is known as a cowl skirt or a peg skirt. For the sake of this video, we're going to be calling it a cowl skirt. You can use the skirt block that you've drafted in the previous videos to adapt and make this beautiful skirt feature. This skirt creates um, some beautiful little uh, sort of cowl excess volume around the side of the hips. You can choose where you want that excess volume to go. It's quite a fun feature, adds a bit of drama to a skirt uh, and it's just a really fun little drafting technique as well. So I thought you might be really interested in seeing that today. This is quite different to some of the other skirt patterns that we've been drafting out. A little bit more um, intricate in terms of the detail it creates and the shape it creates, adding a lot more volume into that hip region, which is really fun. So as ever, to start off with, I want you to go and trace over your skirt front and your skirt back using your body block that you perfected and the fit that you've got. For the purposes of the video demo, I have printed mine off so that you can see it nice and clearly. All right, let's get started. In today's video, I'm wearing the Sagebrush Top by uh, the Friday Pattern Company. Uh, this is a really beautiful pattern. I absolutely love it and highly recommend it if anyone's interested. Right, to start off with, we are going to do work on our skirt front. The first thing we want to do is measure the distance from the centre front to the edge of our dart. Now for everyone, that's going to be different. We need to take that measurement and divide it by two and mark that point on your waistline. Now, as always, I thoroughly recommend that you use a sharp pencil to do all these techniques. I'm obviously using fat marker pens so that you can really clearly see in the videos. Next, I want you to decide the depth of the cowl feature that you want to do. Now, this is obviously design preference, so pick a number that you think is nice. Have a look on Pinterest, on Google, see the types of shapes that you might want to recreate. For me, I'm going to draw that um, cowl stopping just above the hip line, so it's almost like the hips kind of extend up a little bit higher. And at this point, we're working towards the side seam. I'm just going to take a point at four centimetres above the hip line using my prim ruler and just mark a point on the side seam at both the front and the back at four centimetres above the hip line. So my first, my lower cowl line is going to be four centimetres from the hip and my next one I think is probably going to be Let's say, what's the difference between these two? I'd say eight centimetres. So make sure you've got some nice clear guidance. Now at this point, I want you just to find the centre of these two darts and mark them nice and clearly on your dart line. And what we want to do now is find a nice curve to join those two up together, that one and that one. Now it may be that your ruler doesn't have quite the kind of the gentle curve that you're wanting. It may be that you're going to find using a protractor helpful at this point to kind of join those two things up a little bit, give you a bit of a curve to kind of start playing around with. It's kind of like two curves going on there for me. Just looking at how I can join those two curves up together nicely. That's looking quite nice, okay. Right, I've just drawn those in by pencil, but now I'm just going to dash them out so you can see those a little bit more clearly. Okay, so that's my first one. Interestingly, on mine, the distance between the centre point there and the centre point there is almost exactly eight centimetres. So I feel like I can probably just sort of follow and draft out this basic line. That's sort of a bit of an eight centimetre difference. So then hopefully I can just draw in a nice curve based on this. Right, so I've got a sort of bit of a basic outline there. It's going to start curving in really nicely. Yeah, OK, I think we can work with that. Perfect. So now we've got those two lines drawn out there. We're just going to repeat that process on here. The first point is our center point to this dart here. And then the other reference that we're going to sort of curve up to is this one over here. 
So once again, just find some nice gentle curves. And once again, very unlikely we're going to find one without that. <laughs> Use your pattern drafting ruler to work nice and hard for you at this point. And once again, we seem to be at about sort of 7.5, 8 centimetres offset. So I've got that 8 centimetre offset there. The gap up here is about 8. So I'm just going to mark off some distances of 8 centimetres from that line there, just creating a nice equal distance. And then as I start to hit the top, I'm just going to bring in that difference. So it's more like 7.8. 7.6 and then down to 7.5 which is where it is there. So once again just dash that in. So you've got some fun shapes going on here haven't we? <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is just to cut along these cowl lines. Now I'm just going to leave a little pivot point at that point. And for this one, I'm just going to cut it all the way through. The reason why I'm going to cut it through at that point is because actually we want to cut out the dart shape at that point. So you can cut out that dart and you can effectively cut it out at this point too. Because we won't need that volume, we're actually going to take it out. Now we're just going to repeat that same process on this side. I'm going to cut from the dart actually and just kind of work my way down to that cowl line and I'm going to work cut from that dart there and just work my way down to that cowl line. So effectively we've curved that dart and we've just taken it out, right? Do the same on this one, start from this point and work your way down and then just take out that volume again. Now, as ever at this point, I would thoroughly recommend just labeling up your pattern pieces. You've got lots of little bits uh, right now, so let's just make sure we understand what those are in case you lose them in the future. So we've got a skirt back, which is nice and clear here. Skirt back cowl, let's call this skirt back cowl one, skirt back cowl two. Skirt front here, so this is skirt front cowl two and skirt front cowl one. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just to draw a really long straight line on a piece of paper. Now at this point I'm going to move my pattern pieces around because I'm going to be working along the waistband quite a lot. We've got our skirt back and our skirt front. These are sort of upside down because I'm going to be focusing on this bit um, and I would recommend you do the same. So effectively what we're going to do is we're going to space these two things out so that we're creating volume in this location here. What we want to do is to bring our side seam up to this new straight line that we've just drawn. So I'm going to start off by bringing the side seam which is here and I'm going to bring that up up here on this new line that we just drew. I'm going to stick that down. We just want these things to pivot so that we've got our knee line just nicely down there. We're creating a bit of volume but that we're just pivoting at these points here and we've already removed the dart so we're just wanting these things to line up really nice and neatly. And again, when we're looking at the skirt front, we're looking at adjusting the side seam and bringing that right up to that nice right angle. So our side seam is here and we're wanting to place it somewhere along this line. Exactly where is going to depend on our knee line pivot because that needs to join and stay in the same place. And where the waistline up here is just going to tie in really nicely. So if I put that there, I can see that my waistline at these points is looking like it's beginning to be sort of in the right place. I'm just checking my knee line down at the bottom is tying in really nicely down there still. That's all looking pretty good. I'd also recommend just popping a piece down here so that our knees are uh, staying together at that point. All I'm doing at this point is just finding out where this sort of center line might be. I'm just marking it on this perpendicular line so effectively that that will be the depth of your cowl. 
Great, so we've closed the darts up at our waistlines. We've got no darts to add. We've done the same on the skirt front. We've added in loads of fun volume into the skirt and we've made sure that our hemline hasn't changed at all. So the width circumference of our hem is still going to be the same as our skirt block. Next, we're going to get some tracing paper and trace over that. I'm going to have to shift my piece of paper up and down my desk a little bit so that you can see um, and so that you get the full depth of it. The first thing I want to do is to add a seam allowance to this new side seam up here. Then we're going to add a seam allowance to our waistband. Now, this seam allowance should have a bit of a gentle curve to it. So just try and find a curve that looks good to you. I've just sort of dashed it out to give me a feel for what type of shape we're looking for there. And I'm just going to continue that along. Next, we're going to add a side seam to... Next, we're going to add a seam to our centre back. And just repeat the process for this skirt front. Add your 1.5 centimetre seam allowance to your centre front line. You may just want to mark that uh, mark at that point there, which is your centre point between these two. That's the extra that you've added in. It runs parallel with your knee line down there at that point. At this point, I'm just going to twist the pattern piece around on my table so I can actually reach the knee line. <laughs> Now at this point along the hemline, we just want to find a nice simple curve that will just join up the hem at that point. Don't forget if you're adding a seam allowance, this is the time to do it for your hemline allowance. I'm just going to draw mine in at the knee. We're going to label this line here centre front, so CF for centre front and this one CB for centre back so that we clearly know where our front and our back is. The next most important thing is just to add a notch for where the hip line is. So we'll add a little notch in there. We can also add a hip line notch here but the other thing that we may want to add is just about an inch below our hip line like a little double notch and annotate that for our zip line. That could be really helpful. We also want to annotate on where the grain line is going to go. Now for this particular pattern piece we know that the um, side seam is following this line here at that point but we want our grain line to actually go perpendicular to that at 45 degrees. So if we want it to go at 45 degrees I'm just going to pop another pattern drafting ruler on top of that and we can see that that would then be 45 degrees at that angle. Basically what we're wanting is for the grain line to point up to the centre front, to the middle of the skirt up there. Effectively that's what we're, how we're wanting our grain line to sit. So it's pointing up to a waistband. And what that does is it means the side seam is then cut on the bias which just creates a really nice fold and a really nice drape to this particular skirt. This is a really simple pattern piece to annotate. It's just the cowl skirt and we're just going to say to cut to. Perfect, once you've done that, cut out your paper pattern and also your fabric. Brilliant, so once you've cut out your pattern pieces out of your fabric, it's now time to sew it up together. So let's take a look at how to do that together. The first thing I want us to do is just to um, sew down the centre front seam here. Now you may find it helpful to actually go and grab a pen and just mark on your pattern pieces. Uh, this is a washable fabric pen. <laughs> to mark on your pattern pieces which one is the centre front, which one's the centre back, just because the pattern pieces look like really, really similar. <laughs> so off you go and do that and don't forget to cut your notches in for your hip line just as a reference. Now don't forget on your centre back you need to allow a little space for a zip just below the hip line. Okay so with the right sides together we're just going to pin in place the centre front seam. Let's sew that in place now. The next seam we want to sew together is the centre back from the hem which is down at the bottom here up to just below the hip line. 
and this will be where our zip effectively will sit down the center back. So I've just made a little point, a little annotation at this point, just below, maybe about an inch below the hip line where I want to stop. So I'm putting a double pin in there and just a couple more pins down along the center back seam. I'm just starting from the hem and working my way up. Obviously, once again, as always with these demos, we're using a contrasting thread so that you can really clearly see where my stitch line is. And at this point, you can just go and press those seams open. Okay, so now we've got our hemline down at the bottom. We've got our center back on this side and our center front on this side. But what we haven't sorted out yet is what's going on up here. So effectively, what we want to do is just to join these two pieces along here. So bring them together like that, because one side is our center back, one side is our center front. And then I just want you to pin along here. Okay, so we've pinned along that side. Likewise, I just want you to grab the other side and with right sides together, once again, I just want you to pin along this bit here. Can you see that shape a bit easier now? <laughs> It's looking good. It's quite a fun shape this, isn't it? It's uh, really different to the ones we've done in the past. Okay, so go and sew those seams together now. You can now press those side seams open as well. So let's press those two open. At this point, you just want to finish your hemline, however you've chosen to do that, and also your waist as well. So you may have put a waistband on, that's absolutely great. If not, um, and you just followed exactly what I've done, I'm just gonna roll mine under by 1.5 centimeters. This is obviously just a technical exercise, which means that we're just demonstrating how the effects of pattern drafting. So we're not too concerned about finishes and you know, like the, the sewing detail. What we're more interested in is the shape that we're creating at this point. Point, just to demonstrate the different techniques. So once again, as always, if you want to roll um, your hem under and under again, seven mil to start off with and then tuck it under again by eight mil, then you've got a beautiful 15 mil turned under and your wool seam is beautifully encased. You can also overlock it or finish that um, waist seam and your hem seam however you want um, and then turn it under by 1.5. Now, because this is quite a tight circle of a skirt now at this point, you're gonna find there's quite a lot of tension. So we're gonna probably have to clip that out as we go. I feel like this is almost like a Star Wars-y kind of shape that we're gonna create here. <laughs> it's quite like a sci-fi, isn't it? With the, the big drama that we're gonna be creating. Don't forget to just keep checking every now and again that you've still got your 1.5 seam allowance tucked under. It's easy to lose track of that. Brilliant, well done. So now we've sewn up our entire skirt. It's looking really cool, super fun shape. Let's go and see what it looks like on. So here is our cowl skirt. This is one with a lot of volume around the side um, and it drapes just really nicely, it just hangs because of the way we've cut it on the bias really beautifully. Now obviously, depending on the type of fabric that you choose to make this style skirt in, the effect of the cowl will sit differently. This calico is quite structured, so it's giving a lot of volume and shape, but if you picked something with a bit more drape, it would have a much softer visual effect. So well done everyone for creating your cowl skirt. Amazing skills. I hope you've really enjoyed that technical process of just changing the shape of your skirt block, giving it that extra volume. It looks really weird, doesn't it, as a pattern shape, but really fun to kind of explore that technique. So obviously, you know, if you raise or lower where your cowl starts, it's gonna have a big impact on the shape. If you widen it as well, it's gonna get lots more volume. If you make it narrower, it's just gonna give you sort of little pleats on the side effectively. So loads of fun different techniques 
techniques you can use with, um, with that skill that you just learned. So thank you for joining me today. This has been Izzy at Minerva. We've had lots of fun together. If you've got any comments, please do uh, comment below. We always love to hear your comments. Um, and if you've not created a free account on our Minerva website, please do. We love to hear from you and it's great to see your makes. You can create a free account, upload your um, images of things that you've created. You can tag the products so that other people can see and also be inspired. And as ever, please do take pictures of any of your pattern drafting fun that you've been having over the last few weeks. We always love to see uh, what you're making as a result of this particular series. So please feel free to do that. I personally would love to see what you're making. <laughs> as ever, we'll be creating loads more of these videos. So please do um, subscribe to our Minerva YouTube channel and continue to watch and enjoy. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.